Oh hi there, um, welcome to this channel. Um, I'm Black Bright News, broadcasting into your homes, into your world, into your space, on your phone. Thank you for passing by and if you're welcome to like, subscribe and share if it, fit, if it fits your fancy. Anyway, um, today I decided at last to talk once again about the coronavirus, not from a hype point of view, not from a fear-mongering point of view, but just basically from hopefully a sensible point of view so people don't panic and get stressed. Now, I've been sent so many videos and I know it's a bit extreme, but I wanted to show you one in particular because this was, you know, when we think about China, you know, lots of people saying, oh, anybody from China, but China is a massive, massive country. So we have to put it in perspective that it's only Pacific areas in China uh, particularly Wuhan, that seems to be um, seems to be ugh, have this virus which is rampant. Um, there's whistleblowers going around. We don't know what's fake news from what is um, real news. All we know is that it's just invading our screens. We have to be very careful what we watch. We don't want to go in overdrive. We don't want to panic. We don't know if this is a system of divide and rule. We don't know whether it's not it is designed to bring down these wealthy countries. Uh, you know, because... When you think China was at the top a few months ago, at the at its pinnacle, and now you know, mention the word China, and everybody's like, "Oh my God!" Regardless of that, it's just one section or one particular area, and the fact that it's in different areas now, different, I think, forty different countries now, you know, shows that you know the equivalent of maybe Wuhan, is what is in all these other countries. Anyway, let me just show you um, this video that I was sent and the impact it has on the poor people in China. Let me see where it is now. They're taking his temperature. Now they're telling him to come out. He's got a temperature, so look. You've got to come out. He's thinking, I want to go home to my wife and kids. I'm not stopping. He's saying, get out. So look, he's ready to drive off and look what happens. He ain't going nowhere. Look at this. Look, 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 look. He is not going home to his wife or his children. They put them all in the same place, whether they've got the coronavirus or not. That's the end. And look what they do with the car, look. He probably had, he probably had a temperature or something. I can understand China's overreaction because their reputation is at stake. But are they overreacting? Shouldn't there be a more um, humane way of dealing with people? We don't know if he gets to talk to his wife or his children ever again, or whether he just gets dumped in this place. I saw... Um, a video where they had stacks of people in there and you know apparently there's no water there's no food there's no medical supplies so it's like a suicide um camp really you know, well it's not even a suicide it's just like they're just shoved in there and forgotten about and each those who have it then give it to those who didn't have it that man might have just had a slight temperature who knows probably the stress of actually seeing all those people, those people standing outside waiting for him. I mean, what do you do in that situation? I know if I'm going to the doctor and um, 
I go to the doctor and sometimes I'm a bit worried about the results. You know, when you get these test results and they say, you know, calm down, let me take your blood pressure two or three times and we'll wait for the third one for it to calm down. You can actually have a temperature just because of that little bit of stress. That man, he could have got a temperature or stress-related symptoms simply by seeing them standing there and thinking, oh my God, am I going to get home? Really and truly, what they're telling people to do is not go anywhere. It's almost like divide and rule or divide and conquer. Because if they're containing countries and stopping flights and dictating which borders that people can go through and which borders people can't, that is containment. That is control. And yes, they're controlling a virus, but Supposing this virus isn't human to human. And so no matter how many masks, I mean, all those people in China are wearing masks. It doesn't seem to be stopping them from getting it. So if you're all told to wear masks and follow these hygienes, and yet the, the, um, the virus is coming from a different form, like pathogens in the air or in the water supplies or whichever, it's being targeted through drones. We don't know how it's getting from one place to the other. And if they're being so vigilant at airports, how come it's arrived at the UK? Have they? Did they allow somebody in? But the thing is, like I was saying in a previous video, the latency period, I think, is two weeks. So they can have people coming through the airport that are showing no signs. And then two weeks later, they're showing signs and it's... And it's too late. Apparently, um, a gentleman came from Italy. Now, Italy's got some cases, coronavirus. Gentleman came from Italy. I think he, I forget where he lives. I'll, I think I've got it written down somewhere. And he calls 111 because he hears about the, the coronavirus in, in, um, in Italy. And he's just returned from Milan. And he's got the symptoms, coronavirus symptoms. So he calls 111. They say, oh, go to your local hospital. He trapes off to his local hospital, mingling with all of the patients who are sitting there. That's why I don't like hospitals. Then when he finally is called up and goes to the desk, I say, oh, no, you shouldn't be here. Go back home. Go back home. That, by that time, we don't know who he's contaminated. Then they must have said, somebody must have said something, someone to somebody else in the hospital. And they must have said, oh, you shouldn't have sent him home. We need to quarantine him. Too late. Anyway, Next thing he knows, all these people in this big gear, like he's got leprosy or, or the plague, come and get him and quarantine him and goodness knows what else. I mean, he's got out to tell the tale because, I mean, he reported it to the news. I think it was in the Metro on Friday. But the point, fact of the matter is, is that this is how it is spreading. People are going to different parts of the world. They're coming into the country during their latency period, and then it comes out. And by that time, they've already mingled with whoever. And that is why it is impossible to avoid unless you avoid everyone. Somebody said to me, oh, they're going to Thailand. You're like, oh, my God, should I get close to them? So another person just came back from India and you're like, oh, my God, you know, and she's coughing and spluttering and she's behind me and I'm thinking, you know, why are you coming home? You're so bloody selfish. Why are you coming to work? So selfish people coming to work, coughing and spluttering. Stay at home until you're well. They should not be allowed to come into work when they've just come from abroad. And actually, I think I'm going to talk to HR about that. Because really and truly, that should not be allowed especially in this time. And the thing is, we do need to protect ourselves. I went to London for a Turkish bath the other day. And um, when I went down there, I geared myself up. I mean, I know I was exaggerating, but I put the mask on when I went on the underground. And, you know, as soon as I got on the underground, this woman was coughing and spluttering. I'm like, get off the bloody train in my head. You know what I mean? But it makes you paranoid. Then when I am having the spa, you know, somebody has a little sniffle, you're like, oh, I wonder if they've got something. I wonder if they've been checked out. 
But this is how businesses are going to be destroyed. This is how flights are not going to go anywhere. So the tourist industry is going to be closed down. Businesses are going to go just close. That's what's going to happen. So not only are you going to have, well, online businesses act excellent at this time. Online businesses will thrive. Because it means that people can stay at home and get whatever they want and they don't have to engage with anyone. This is where people will isolate themselves even more. So it really is quite a sad state of affairs. But all is not lost. We have to be practical. We have to put things into perspective. Now, did you know that, um, I don't know how old these statistics are. I think they're over the last, I forgot to read when this video came out, but I, I'm pretty sure it was within the last month or so. But there was 25 corona deaths a month compared to 38,000 people who died from the flu virus and so if you put it into perspective and then you know one over one million dies globally of heart disease now if you think what causes heart disease is mostly stress and you're getting stressed about the coronavirus you know you can end up not dying of the coronavirus but dying of heart disease so be careful Put it in perspective, avoid the news wherever you can about the coronavirus, avoid videos, all these ones about the whistle blowing and all of these hyped up and everywhere you go, just avoid it because there's nothing you can do about it apart from hygiene, try to protect yourself wherever possible, have a, um, a healthy diet, a ketone rich diet, top, top yourself up with vitamin D and zinc. You know, drink plenty of water and just try to get plenty of rest and just look after your body. Try to make your body as resilient as possible and try not to panic and stress yourself about what's going on. Continue with your holidays unless the um, air, unless the, of course the airports are shut or then the planes aren't going where you plan to go. But you cannot put your life on hold. One disturbing piece of news that I came across that I really need to share with you only because I think about how they um, plot people's minds. And um, this was said by at a press conference in Genoa. The government has underestimated the coronavirus, allowing the migrants to land from Africa where the presence of the virus was confirmed is irresponsible. Africa has so far had one, only one confirmed case of COVID-19, and that was in Egypt. Africa is the largest continent in the world. And yet this was said at a press conference to plant the seed that Africa is a, is a, is a cause of the coronavirus. You see how these people are wicked and devious. And then why not just say Egypt? Why not just say um, because of its presence in Egypt? But oh no, they can't say Egypt. They have to say Africa. So people associate Africa with the coronavirus. It emanated from bloody China. So how does Africa's name have to come into this? But they can't let Africa get off scot-free. They have to bring it into, and it's things like that that I find really disturbing, the way that they just plant seeds into people's minds to create even more fora. Next thing you know, oh, you can't go to Africa. You know what I mean? It is absolutely ridiculous. So, you know, when I'm talking about putting things into perspective, one coronavirus, one corona case, confirmed case of COVID IG was in Egypt, not Africa. Not I know Egypt is in Africa, but in Egypt. We have 20 cases. I think, well, it might even be more than that um, because I haven't, I was supposed to do this video about a couple of weeks ago and I just put it on standby. But I thought, let me do one, but not one that's going to create 
stress and all that kind of stuff. But um, I think England, I think they have about 20 cases. So, I mean, compared to one in Egypt, and when you think Africa is the largest continent in the world, I don't even know why they even mentioned it, but there's, the mentioning of it is deliberate to plant the seed already. And that's why I'm saying it's all about divide and rule. Italy, I mean, the president of Italy, he reckons he's not getting caught up in the hype. Um, let me think if there's anything else I really needed to say. 11 countries across the Middle East have closed their air and land borders to Iran. Um, to me, like I said, it's like a targeted drone, this, virus, this coronavirus. Um, Qatar Airways has announced that they will quarantine passengers arriving from Iran and South Korea for 14 days, even if they show no signs of the virus. Um, Italian authorities have said they will impose fines on anyone entering or leaving restricted areas by Monday. I think that was last Monday. The number of cases of viruses in Italy has risen to 229. The six people who have died. We've got one USA person died, I believe. Well, that was when I was doing this. Um, it's really affecting um, economic growth. Stock markets are dropping. Um, we know the pharmaceutical companies are really... I heard that they found a um, an antidote. I haven't heard much about that. Why aren't they promoting that? That's what they should be promoting on the TV. Uh, Prime Minister Giuseppe Conte has blamed poor management in a hospital with the death toll in Italy rising to 11 and infections to 322, the largest number of people infected in Europe. Um, supposed to be in about 48 countries, I believe. Health ministers from Austria, France, Germany, Switzerland, Slovenia and Croatia are due to attend a meeting in Rome, that was last Tuesday, to discuss containing the virus. Italy's government is urging its neighbours not to impose border controls, which it argues would be ineffective. They've cancelled the Venice Carnival. Um, I think Schengen borders are still open. The Italian government has turned down the idea of the reintroduction of internal Schengen borders as a prevention measure against the further spreading of the coronavirus after over 200 cases have been detected. That's what I mean. You see how these numbers fluctuate. That's why you can't take it all on, peeps. You cannot take it all on. Italian Prime Minister Giuseppe Conte said suspending the Schengen Agreement would not help towards the containment of the coronavirus. This is a draconian measure that does not meet the needs of Italian citizens in the field of containment of infection, the Prime Minister said regarding the suspension of the Schengen Agreement. So he's not getting caught up in the hype. Further, he sarcastically told journalists that closing the borders would turn Italy into a lazaretto. That is an isolation hospital for people with infectious diseases like leprosy or the plague, because that is what has happened in China. Well, in one, in, in one, oh, whatever that place is, the name's gone, Wuhan. Um, Jamaica had passengers on board the MSC Maravaglia and that ship had been detained. It was a cruise ship, but I think that's um, okay now. Apparently, one of the um, stewards had just returned from the Philippines and he had corona type or flu type symptoms. So, as a precautionary measure, they docked and then you had so many people making a fuss about it. But can you imagine if they hadn't taken that? measure and then somebody caught the coronavirus they'd be saying oh they didn't do their job properly so one man was saying oh look we've been docked for four hours and we we're, it's wasting our trip we wanted we we're supposed to be out there drinking and doing all of this i mean that's what i mean on the one hand you want to get on with your life but on the other hand you do want people to take precautions because you're with a lot of people i don't know how many they said was on that ship but there's a lot of people Oh, the 4,500 capacity. That is a lot of people on a cruise ship. 
so they have to um, they have to take precautions. Um, what else is there? The frustration was palpable amongst us passengers. We were looking forward to enjoying the beaches, the food, and the culture. Can you imagine? Ah, oh dear. Anyway, um, MSC Cruises apologises for any inconvenience caused and the disappointments to its guest in connection with today's missed call due to the delay in receiving clearance. Oh, they missed a call, so that said it was all clear. Whoops. Um, what else? Yeah, I think as long as you put things into perspective and... Um, don't get panics about things. Just look after yourself and your family. And just live life as you can for the fullest. What they, they say, eat, drink and be merry because tomorrow you may die. So that's all I've got to say. Be blessed. Bye bye.